Uh, in, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, settling velocity, and we're thinking in terms of um, all the settling of detrital fragments in a water column or a fluid column, uh, seawater, fresh water, and um, we we know that that from you can go back to Archimedes' principle, for example, and know that a floating object displaces its weight in water. Now, when you have a particle, um, you know, a particle of sand, for example, like this, which is uh, the weight of the displaced water is is less than the weight of the particle. We know that this particle is going to sink, and we know that uh, <clears throat> as it sinks, there's going to be an upward drag force as well as a buoyancy force and uh, uh, which are proportional to the uh, settling velocity. So we know that there's going to be a period of initial acceleration. If you're a skydiver, you jump out of an airplane, you begin to accelerate, you hit some terminal velocity and that's dependent upon a lot of factors. Uh, uh, you know, including how you position your body with respect to, you know, during the fall, and uh, what what's the exposed surface area and so on during the uh, during your uh, descent. And but at some point you reach a terminal velocity, a constant uh, velocity, and that would be the settling velocity. Now, this is this settling velocity is defined. Uh, <clears throat> by this relationship here, which is referred to as Stokes' Law. And uh, Stokes' Law just gives us a relationship between settling velocity and the particle radius. Specifically, particle velocity, the settling velocity, that terminal velocity varies uh, directly with the square of the particle radius. But you see other terms in here. We have the density of the particle minus the density of the fluid and we have the acceleration due to gravity and we have eta which is the <clears throat> which is the um, uh, viscosity and so, so this particular relationship that is noted here makes the assumption that the particles are spherical in, in shape that's kind of the background on that. Now, working with this relationship, we have the particle velocity, again, proportional to the uh, square of the particle radius uh, divided by the viscosity. But, but in general, we can just say that the velocity is proportional to the radius squared. So if we have two particles that we're dropping down, or, you know, are settling, <clears throat> have been washed out into uh, a delta, uh, <clears throat> into the into the shoreline areas on a lake or or uh, uh, a beach front on on you know in, in an ocean environment that the ratios of the settling velocities of two particles with different radii are going to be in proportion uh, v one over v two is going to be in proportion to the ratio ratio of those radii squared. Uh, we can also note that since the velocity is equal to the depth, uh, you know, over here if we look at a given environment, this could be a lake or offshore area in the uh, marine environment, and let's say uh, you're dropping sediment into the water column that uh, has a certain depth d, we know that it's going to take a time or a velocity, it's going to descend with a velocity d over t, so it'll take a certain amount of time to fall. That velocity then would be the depth over the time, the fall time. And so this equation that we have up here, v1 over v2, is easily transform, transformed into an equation expressed in terms of the ratios of the settling times. And you see here that the settling times change positions because they're <clears throat> in the denominator here for the velocity term. We get T2 over T1 
equal to r1 over r2 squared. So <clears throat> if the radius of the second particle, r2, is larger, then that particle radii squared will be a small fraction. Therefore, the descent time for the larger particle will be a smaller fraction of the descent time of the smaller particle. So <clears throat> we have this T2 will be less than T1 in proportion to R1 over R2 squared. So ju just some back background on uh, the Stokes relationship. Again, we're you know just coming back to Archimedes' relationship. We know that uh, the weight of the object is going to be, there's going to be a buoyant force, <clears throat> an upward buoyant force, which is going to be equal to the weight of the displaced water. And that uh, this difference then is uh, equal to the drag. And the, and the drag is, is uh, expressed in terms of the viscosity, uh, the radius of the particle, and the velocity with which it's falling. The gravitational force is, you know, the weight of the particle is just equal to the mass of the particle times the acceleration due to gravity. And the mass is just equal to density times volume. So we this relationship that we have up here becomes this relationship here. And, um, and then just substituting, assuming again that we have spherical particles, then we have... Uh, the relationship expressed in this form and um, the particle radius, the radius of the volume, the spherical volume of water that's displaced by the particle, those are all equal. So R sub P is equal to R sub F is equal to R. <clears throat> so, you know, you should be able to rearrange this expression to show that, uh, well, basically to, to uh, derive Stokes, uh, Stokes' law. So uh, you might just go through the algebra and uh, show that, in fact, the velocity is going to be equal to 2 times the difference in the densities times the acceleration due to gravity times the particle radius squared over 9 times the viscosity. So let's let's take a minute and just look at the units of viscosity. Um, <clears throat> think about viscosity for a minute. We just uh, multiply both sides by eta, divide both sides by the velocity. Uh, we get an expression for eta. And if we take a look at the units for viscosity, then we're just you know looking at the units of eta. And I'm just subst we're assuming a CGS uh, system of units here. So instead of m, l, and t, we'll put in the uh, the unit. So we have gram per cubic centimeter for the density. <clears throat> Doesn't matter though, you know, we still have the difference in two densities still has units equal to the density. The factor two doesn't have a unit. So anyway, uh, the acceleration due to gravity, centimeters per second squared. Radius squared, centimeter squared. Velocity, centimeters per second. So we go through the units cancellation. We can see that the cubic centimeters are going to cancel out here. A second is going to cancel out here. We end up with a centimeter second in the denominator. And this unit, the gram centimeter second, is referred to as the poise or poise. I'm not sure about that pronunciation. You know, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, so. <clears throat> Viscosity is a constant of proportionality between the shear stress exerted on the falling particle. We've got a particle which is falling through the water, and so there's a shear st stress exerted on the particle as it falls uh, between the particle and the bounding liquid or the water and the water column. And and this uh, we have an outward gradient of the fluid velocity uh, from the falling particle into the medium. So the units of viscosity are units of shear stress to velocity gradient. So we have stress over velocity gradient, force over area, uh, velocity gradient, which is L over T per L. And so just using the standard notation for units, we have ML over T squared L squared, 1 over 
T. We have mass. You know, going through the unit's cancellation here, we have uh, <clears throat> we have a mass term over a length term times a time term, and in our CGS system, this gives us gram centimeters seconds. So, uh, so <clears throat> if we knew what the viscosity of water was, and it turns out to be 0.01 poise, uh, we we, we could directly compute the velocity and the t descent times for particles of uh, any given radius. So what what we're showing here basically is we've got the formula for the velocity, part of the settling velocity, the terminal velocity, and the uh, settling time, assuming a uh, constant depth. In this case, I've just taken uh, 100 meters. So over here we've got particle radius. Uh, plotted or velocity plotted versus particle radius and we can see that the velocity is as the particle radius becomes bigger and bigger uh, the velocity increases uh, at, you know the the increase becomes steeper and steeper <clears throat> now when we look at time of course time varies inversely with the velocity uh, but also with uh, r squared obviously and for really, really small particle radii, I mean, this settling time becomes infinite. So this part of the graph is really not all that useful. We know that it should become infinite, but uh, let's come over here and let's you know take a look at the same plot, but let's start the settling time here at one hour. And we can see that for a particle that has a radius of a little bit less than a hundredth of a centimeter or a tenth of a tenth of a millimeter, that we have <clears throat> it takes about a it takes about an hour, or a little bit longer than an hour, to settle through that 100 meters. And then we get this fairly rapid drop in settling time as the particles become larger and larger. They reach, they hit the bottom much more quickly. So this idea of graded bedding um, is just a direct direct outgrowth of Stokes' law. So we have particles, the larger particles, uh, they come down first. Let's show that again. So the larger particles are going to fall more quickly. They're going to come down to the to the ocean floor, the lake bed floor more quickly than the particles of intermediate uh, radii and then the smaller particles are going to settle on top. So when you see graded bedding, um, this is one possible mechanism which uh, can control the uh, distribution of particle sizes, uh, uh, kind of a fining upward uh, sequence. So this is uh, an outgrowth of uh, Stokes' Law and a little bit of background on it. And uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll have more later.